Oh man, guys, I just got here. I left Oklahoma City this morning at five o'clock and uh, I am pulling up to the Osmonds place here just outside of Mission, South Dakota. So pretty. What the heck is going on here? Is it a deer? Uh oh. I'm kicking something off the road. Oh, yeah. Oh, she got one headlight. Yeah. No, she. Did you see the front end of that? Yeah, it was destroyed. That sucks. So, oh, there's a bunch of deer out there. <laughs> hey guys, Dusty Baker with Cross Timbers Bison. Welcome back to the channel. Guys, I am out here in buffalo country bison country i uh, i can't wait for you guys to see how today goes i am outside of mission south dakota i got a, i'm up here with a good friend dakota pure bison great group of people but guys i mean this is beautiful you can't maybe i don't know if you can see this but there is bison all over the place here so um I've got an eventful day for you, and I promise you, you're going to want to watch this. An exciting day. We're working bison today here at Dakota Pure, and um, I'm going to be taking some animals home from South Dakota. They're going to Oklahoma. Stay tuned, guys. Good morning, everyone. What's up? This is Tucker. The hot of Tucker, guys. So, you can see all the equipment right here. We've got a skid steer. We've got a four wheeler. We've got uh, two ATVs. I think I broke down four wheeler. That's okay. But a lot of equipment's going into this because um, it is a big day. This is the third time that they've worked them this year. What's well, the third group? Excuse me. This is the third group that they've worked. They've gone, I think, three weeks back to back to back. So, um, got a lot of people here today. A group that they always recruits. Got family. Got close friends and employees. Uh, like Tucker right there. That are all a part of this. Uh, putting all this work together to work. 200 at least 20 bison today. But I do want to show you something right here. So, this. <laughs> is awesome a lot of you watched my video of us working the bison and one of the things uh, at the original place that you saw is we needed a, a, a cage or something on the front of a, a tractor and whatnot to push the bison that's a lot safer especially like when you're working with Big Joe and whatnot well, this is a serious bison pusher right here um, obviously it's hydraulic this is the most serious one I've ever seen right here just a quick attachment uh, for his, it is awesome Scott actually yesterday damaged that one and uh, they already put a new uh, hydraulic on it so uh, this is a very important this is a lot safer because you can be inside this cab and it looks like it may be heated and air conditioned so whoever's in there is a lucky guy but um, all ran on hydraulics this can open and close you'll be able to see it today but really anxious to see this work I'd love to have one of these. This is the most this is the most serious one I've ever seen. But I need one of these as well too. Would be nice. But this is a lot safer uh, on the people and the bison um, to push them in the last push through that alley system as they go down into the tub and we'll squeeze you. You'll see that today. Um, but we've got quite an operation bigger than what we're used to here. So.
tight curve. Fifty to seventy pairs. Okay. We bring them into that triangle fin, and they flow into this triangle fin. This is what we fill with. Then we bring them out another seventy. So we got Tate, Scoot Steer, Stevens on the red four wheeler, Tucker's on the yellow Honda. Okay. And, uh, oh, and our tank's running over. Uh oh. Of course. Part of farming. What'd you do, Tucker? Big rig. I'm Dusty. Nice to meet you, man. If that's the worst thing, then we're, we're okay. Yeah. <laughs> right where we drive. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. this is where oh, we bring up. Gotcha. I see where we're doing here. That was 
time. Boo <laughs> boo. I like that. That works well. Yeah. So you'll put some more right here? Yep. We'll, we'll. You'll, when you pull up here, I'm going to get the shot of them running this way with my GoPro. Oh, yeah. I'm going to yeah, set it on the ground. Kind of. Yeah, this one won't. If they hit it, it's okay. My other one that clamps, but. Right that yeah. That was some gnarly dust. Driest ever been down. That was a wild ride. That is fun. Oh, I'm filming and also trying to be a part of this. I wish I could work. Um, I feel disappointed. I'm disappointed in myself. I can't be working because this is exciting and fun. So, um, that's how you do it right there. Catch a bunch of bison and cut them off. So let's go uh, see what Scott thinks. Uh, we, we had it originally built. We had to redesign it. Whoa, hey. Look out. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey. Not paying attention. Yeah, That's that happens. Not paying attention. Um, so it hooks right up to John Deere 97 horse skid steer and it just cuts all the stress out of working everything you just there's like that they want to come down here the way we have it designed you know coming and going and so, watch out cats hey hey <laughs> hey <laughs> there you go put set your skid steer down <laughs> out of my skid steer <laughs> So, uh, yeah, anyway. No, that's like one of the most serious ones I've ever seen. Yeah, and you just get behind them and you just slowly push, push them. Push them. Yell, yell yeah. And scream and yeah. And people aren't out there. People aren't out there. That's the most important part. Lots of it. Unless it breaks down. Unless it, it breaks down. Into a post. You can see all the welds on it. And it widens yeah, to fit your. Arms on it. So it's an eight foot center and five foot wings. So. Close off the whole alley with, uh, Just like that. You know, works extremely well. That's that's the way to do it. Uh, we're gonna Practice. The alleyway okay. So that it doesn't. Last time we worked, it was so dusty and we're so dry. Usually, it's always just wet down. There. Right. But it's so dry. We're expecting that dusty. So we got the water rig. Soak her down. Okay. Let's do that next. Ah. All right, so the first part is they're in the big holding pins is where they're at now. Um, what we just did, uh, we still got more out there to sort, but they basically go from one big area, like I've always said, one big area to another smaller area, 
and now they'll be able to cut them out in small groups and run them into the tub they'll use that skid steer they're going to push the bison into small increments get them in the tub and now they're going to come down the alley and go through the actual squeeze chute this area here is where i'm going to be standing cutting calves off we're going to go heifers and bulls and we're going to be cutting them sorting them here and uh they're due by weight because they have so many pins scott and, and his guys have set up these pins and guess what they're using what i just recently got here on the new ranch these freestanding panels they're so nice and easy to use they're heavy duty and some of them even have gates on them like this one right here but that's what almost this entire area is built on is these freestanding panels so um they're tough and they're durable and and they can stay withstand the bison so we'll be down here sorting in these pins uh and and the adults too the adults will probably go out into the main pasture so and they'll sort and cut them off as they run them through the squeeze chute we'll use the oh. yep, and then just No, nope. you sure didn't. Yep, they're just gonna run in the alley. So we'll go FPS, bull calves, Dusty's will go in the middle pen, cold cows, hard pen, and bull. Good clips, boys. You got a little test run here? Yeah. It's like hitting the clickers before, uh, before you flip the steak, you know? I got you. <laughs> we don't get them injectable, do we? Yep, injectable. We're going to do it this year. Last year we didn't. No. 477. So. It's a 477. She'd be above average. Yep. We'll go ahead. Okay. Uh, Where's our We'll get the feel over here. We'll get more of the yeah. You're good. You I get old number 1500 and get started. There we go. So run down Dusty and open up the the, pit, the gate right in, right in front of that bale here. All right, so what we're doing here is the first group is actually these calves. They're tagging the calves, they're working them, and then mine are actually going in these pins. So these two heifers will go with us to Oklahoma. He's got a pin just for me right here as we are starting to cut and separate bulls and heifers. And uh, Scott's picking me out some heifers. So they're gonna come down here and we're gonna let them right in here bull calves are going right here in this area. Bull calf, let me know what calf it is, so bull calves will go right here. Right here. So here comes the last heifer. Here. That's 10. That's 10 right there. Yes, there's our 10 heifers right there. That last one just weighed 580 pounds. Those are huge heifer calves, guys.
Just got a bull calf, guys. Seven five. Oh, yeah, those 15 heads we bought, they're not 15 off the bat of the ranch. This is one of them. They're a really good cow. Turner cow. Yeah. Turner Boston ranch. I don't think they had one open. Really? Off the South Dakota ranch? Yep, all from the, the BQ. That's bad. Bad River Q is the year they were born. Bad I'm River. Little Montreal going to start a little slow dog. Yeah, we're
one means born 21. This is whatever herd number five, I guess. Yep. Baker herd, we call it. 16th one through the shoes. Okay. So if there's more than 100 calves, it messes up our whole system. <laughs> so I know when I look at that calf, I know what herd it is. What you're doing. They'll be separated anyways. But... They grew up with. We try to keep them each in you know, social. Life. They, you know, they already kind of got the social thing figured out. We don't like to mix them together. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Six eleven, and we had another bull that weighed six. Well, that big one that just went out, he weighed five. A little bit before that. 611, and I think we had a 605. 508. Just hard to find short is all. Yeah. That's poron. Uh, it's just a uh, just a you know poron dewormer. Okay. Then we give them an inject warmer because this is the only time our cows get run through. They only get through once. One a time. Year. Do everything in the cows. We give them everything too. Sometimes we just worm them through the feed, but I like to make sure that yes. we got that one worming on because we don't do it again. It's, you know, it just one time. Scott, who is this? This is Doors. She's awesome. 185. She's pretty nice. She raises big calves. The boss cow. The boss cow. How old is she? She's a G, so she's born in 2016. So what is that? She's five? She's big. Nice. She's like 12, 32. And there she goes. That, that's what the, how the calf gets new, the uterus feeds the placenta. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. Pregnant. 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 Yeah. That's the way to do it. Oh, man. What brand is that? Repro scan. Oh, okay. Repro scan. Absolutely. So much better. Well, you're so you're, It's going. You're quick. Pregnant. Yeah, that's so fast. And that's it's, efficient. And it's so much easier on you. Yeah. Right? Because you're not in there going up juggling. The yep. You're not looking for anything body specifically. You're just you see right. parts yep. and yep. you know it's a, it's a there's a calf. Yep, <laughs> and it's past 80, 90 days. Gotcha. Because it's big enough. Yep. Open. Open. Even though I saw both both horns all the way in and out, 
these guys rarely have opens, so I always go in and just double check. Yep. Like like when we use this on beef cows, we almost always go in and double check. Open. Gotcha. Okay. Because that one open coiled up horn can you can think you're open, and that other horn just grab it, and it's all the way down, and you just don't see you it. Don't see it. Yeah. Doc, you ready to cow right out of Doc here is correct checking all the females, all the cows, and uh, he's using this ultrasound, and it goes by really fast, is what you heard him just say there, but this is very quick. I mean, he's checking and getting a read on that ultrasound in like less than 20 seconds, and he can identify um, if there's a calf in there or not. Like he said, he's going off body parts. Um, we're 80 or 90 days into um, past breeding, so they're big enough to sell really quick. So, Scott in here, what they're doing is if they're pregnant, uh, they go back out in the pasture and go out to the main area, and then if they're open, they are separated into another pen where they decide to do something with them later. Well guys, that is it. That is a heck of a day. I think we started about 10 o'clock and it's 4.15. We just ran the last cull cow through. She was open. Guys, these are some awesome animals. This is some of the best animals I've ever seen. Uh, Scott and his family do a great job. And uh, I just want to mention that before I end this, but these are some awesome animals and I cannot wait to take mine back and for Marissa, to see them and Kevin and um, share the story of uh, the journey of taking care of ours and, and putting them on a new place. So you got some South Dakota bison headed to Oklahoma. I'm gonna head out tomorrow morning. I'm gonna load them out and we're gonna head south. Got a, about a 11 and a half hour trip. It's gonna be another full day 
Um, but I uh, just want to thank Scott for letting me come and work these bison and, and hang out with them. And man, every time you go someplace like this, especially here, you learn a lot. We ran through, oh, uh, somewhere around 220 uh, pairs of bison. Cow calf is what that means. So just what a day, a uh, long day for sure compared to uh, working our 40. They're working these bison and getting them in a squeeze shoot. They're in that squeeze shoot for maybe less than a minute. I was timing a couple of them. Less than a minute, they're in that squeeze shoot. They're getting their vaccinations and they're out. That's awesome. The calves take a little bit longer because they have to get more vaccinations. They're getting tags in their ear for the first time. So calves take a little bit more attention. Uh, but other than that, I mean, you're talking two minutes at the max, unless there's a problem, these animals are in the squeeze shoot and they're getting out. So the adults, they get kicked back out to the big pasture here where it's uh, God's country out there. So, um, cool day. Glad we're uh, purchasing some bison because uh, we stopped by here, if you guys don't remember, on our way back from the Custer Roundup, Marissa and Marks and I stopped out here, and uh, we saw his animals for the first time, and uh, I was excited about them, so I had to come back and buy some. So, anyways, uh, hope you guys enjoyed the day. Uh, if you guys have any comments, leave it below. There's some beautiful bison out here, guys, just outside of Mission, South Dakota. Check Dakota Pure out, guys. Have a really good bison. If you're interested in buying bison, and you're in the South Dakota area, North Dakota, it doesn't matter find these bison up here um i can't wait for ours right here to get to oklahoma and we bought a little bull calf in there because in a couple years we'll need a breeding bull so oh fun day can't wait to talk to you guys more about it you can see back there in the back there's bison way up there on that hill it's just beautiful out here this is bison country nothing against oklahoma uh, it's my state and whatnot, and it, it, Oklahoma has beautiful ground for bison, but this is meant for bison, and I'm sure thousands of them, millions of them were roaming here at one point, and Scott and them have got them back here roaming again in, in large numbers, which is where they should be. This is the country for bison, and uh, I love that, and uh, they're raised on grass. They're raised on good grass out here, native grass and uh we're taking these good animals home and that's where they're going to go right back to is on the new ranch on that grass that native grass which is where the bison belong so can't wait to um keep you on this journey with these animals and bring you on this journey with these animals you start raising bison you start with good bison that is something i learned a long time ago from doc parsons when i started with his first five my first five from him you start off with good bison, and uh, that's what we're doing right here with 10 yearling heifers and a potential breeding bull for the future, starting off with these awesome animals. It doesn't get any better than this right here, guys. Check to cut a pure bison out. Um, good friends, good family, good people. They let me stay at their home, and they took care of me, fed me. I want to thank the Osman family uh, for that, for taking care of me. And uh, I want to thank Scott for his friendship and for uh, letting me come up here and be a part of working. I didn't do a whole lot. Everybody else worked a lot harder than me. Um, and uh, I, I did what I could to help out, but I didn't do near as much as his buddies and his family did. So I think this is something that we'll uh, hopefully keep doing in the future. And uh, it's fun to see his animals and how they're doing in Oklahoma and we'll keep up and stay in touch with Scott and how they're doing and someday these heifers will be having lots of babies and whatnot hopefully and, and can see that offspring as uh, as we grow in the future so thank you guys for watching